Want of foresight, unwillingness to act when action would be simple and effective, lack of clear thinking, confusion of counsel until the emergency comes, until self-preservation strikes its jarring gong, these are the features which constitute the endless repetition of history. The other day, my wife's cousin, a Chinese man who works in a public hospital in the northeastern province of Liaoning, sent a photo of himself at work. He was essentially dressed up in full biological protective gear. His province has had at least 50 confirmed cases of the so-called 2019 novel coronavirus, but many Chinese say that this is being underreported. My wife and him got talking about how much he was getting paid for what many would consider to be hazardous work. The answer came quickly. Zero. He's not getting paid, even though he's interacting with patients on a day-to-day -day basis who potentially have coronavirus. At first I thought, well, that isn't so bad. I mean, it makes some sense that in times of national emergency, some staff would volunteer their time to help combat the contagion that is crippling their country. However, he didn't volunteer. He was told that he had to come into work whether he liked it or not. I asked my wife what would happen if he didn't. The answer was simple. He would lose his job and never be allowed to work in a hospital or hold any other government job ever again. OK, OK, it sounds a little bit harsh, but makes some sense based on the critical nature of the outbreak. However, this isn't the first time he's gone without pay. Last year when I was in China, my family and I went out to dinner with him and his wife and young daughter. He was drinking heavily and started opening up about his job. He told me that he wasn't getting paid and hadn't been paid for more than three months. I asked him how he could put up with that. He simply replied that he had no other option. His wife was still working as a nurse and receiving a salary, so they were able to scrape by on one income. Plus, they were receiving some financial support from other family members. I asked him why he couldn't just leave and work for a different hospital. He replied with the classic Chinese expression, Mi o banfa, which basically means there's nothing that can be done. Anyway, he asked me what would Australian workers do in that situation. I said that if it was happening to a lot of workers, there would probably be protests on the street. People would go on strike. He shook his head and said that wouldn't work in China. He told me a story of a couple of Chinese workers that he knew that tried to do just that. The protest lasted all of about five minutes, at which time a team of police rocked up and hurled the workers into the back of their police vans. Public dissent is a big no-no in China. I suppose that's how the Communist Party maintain their grip on power. Do what we say, or we'll arrest you. I asked my wife last night if her cousin has ever been paid over the last year. She said that she didn't know, as he doesn't like to talk about it. I asked why the hell does he hang on to the job? Basically, it comes down to government benefits. If you put up with the pressures of a government job all your life, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a good pension when you reach retirement age. There are also other benefits like cheaper health insurance and so on. Basically, the unwritten rule is that if you're a government employee, you put up with crappy conditions now knowing that the government will look after you in your old age. Anyway, that's how much a coronavirus worker gets paid. Zip. I'm not saying that all workers are in the same situation, but as with most things in China, if you see one cockroach, there are bound to be a million more.